But every time his presence comes in, he comes to heal. He comes to deliver. He comes to fill. He comes to change. He comes to set someone free to know. Put in a wave. 
If you need to, in the comments, amen? Welcome to all on Facebook. Welcome to all on Instagram. Welcome to all on the conference line, amen? I'm Pastor Sonia Chambers, and I am here to share the pure word tonight, amen? I would like you to prepare yourself for communion, those who take communion, amen? Uh, utilize what's in your home. You can use a, a light beverage and a piece of bread, cracker, whatever you have. Um, just to have something that represents the blood of Jesus and represent his body. Amen? So before we get started, I just want to remind everyone, and then we're going to start out in prayer. Uh, our website is standardbearerny.org. Amen? And um, you can download the SBNY app at Faith. At, uh, um, it's called, I'm reading it backwards, so here, church.app by Faith Connector. And you go into the Google or Apple store and you can download the app and you'll be able to see the sermons if you're not seeing it right now live. And you can go back to previous sermons because the Holy Spirit has been talking to us on a consistent basis through the teachings on um, Saturday nights and also the teachings on Tuesday nights. So it's like a series of, of um, discussions that he's having with us and he's trying to sort us out. Amen? So we bless the Lord for that. And you should take a sip with me. Amen? So let's open up in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you and just praise you for this time. We thank you once again for covering each and every um, area of our lives, oh God. We thank you for covering our city, our, our state, our nation, oh God, our governmental leaders. Cover each and every one of them even now. We thank you for touching those whose hearts are broken and bereaved. We thank you for those who are healing. We thank you for those on the front lines. Cover, um, put a hedge of protection over them and give them the peace, oh God. We ask asking for mercy, oh God, because mercy suits the case, because multiple families even have lost multiple loved ones. So we need your power, God, like never before. We need your spirit. It's time to be all that we are called to be, but God, we can't do this without you. So Father, we give you honor and glory tonight. And open our eyes that we may see what you're saying, and our ears so we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen? So hallelujah. So good evening again. I want us to prepare ourselves to be. I think behind me it says you could be sweet as can be. Amen? But the word tonight is time to be. Amen? And what is it time to be? Turn in your Bible, scroll on your phones to James chapter 1, verse 6. And there'll be several scriptures that we're going through tonight because it's time to be. Amen? I'm going to begin. Amen? It says in James 1, 6, But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So that's that first B. It's time to be sure about the God that you serve. It's time to be sure that you have faith in the King of kings and the Lord of the lords. It's time to be sure that he's your master and he's your savior. It's time to be sure that you have relationship, that you're really connected to Jesus Christ. It's time to be sure that you're not just a member of a church or you're just checking church out, but you want to be a disciple. You want to grow. You want to be more. You want to learn more. This scripture says, do not do not waver. This is not the time to straddle the fence and try to figure out one foot in um, Christ and the other out. Because people are losing their lives still on a daily basis. Amen? And even though the death toll is going down, the church has been pretty much hit very hard. And we've lost loved ones and friends. So this is not the time to be trying to figure out, do I love God or do I still want to hang out? Do I love? This is time to be sure that you're anchored in Christ. Amen? That's James. Because it's time to be sure. Amen? So you may have to type like, Lord, I'm sure. If you're sure, you should write in, type in that you're sure. 
It's time to be all that he's called you to be. Amen? Be sure. And Father, I pray even for and right now for those who are still wavering, those who are still struggling, who don't want to trust you completely. I speak into the atmosphere right now. It's time to trust him 100%, knowing that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we thank you, God, for those who have moved over to the right side and have decided to be sure to make Jesus their choice. Amen? Now I would like us to turn to John chapter 15, verse 16, and that's the Amplified. Because it's time to be. Because sometimes we try to be everything everybody else wants us to be. Anybody have that issue where people try to make you into what they need you to be? You could be there. I was, I was talking to um, one of the members, and they had always wanted me to be the babysitter, and I can't be because of what's going on in the, in the atmosphere now. But sometimes we others want us to be what well, we're not sure if we even want to be. And if that's you tonight, we want to clarify that it's time to be all that God called you to be. And some of those changes that you're going to have to make will be drastic. Say amen right there. Some of the changes that are have to be made are going to be drastic because we are in drastic times. Church as we know it today is no longer the same. Amen? I'm preaching from a living room, so I'm clear it's not the same for me. You're watching from home. Some did do online streaming, but now that's becoming a, a norm. Amen? John 15, 16. You have not chosen me but I have chosen you. What do you do when God has chosen you? And he's telling you that. You have not chosen me, but I have. When you have been chosen to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but he's still pulling at you. He's still telling you it's time to be close to me. It's time to pray with me. It's time to spend time with me. It's time to put foolish things away and pick up your Bible. It's time to stop playing games with your phone and start reading your word. It's time to be. Amen? I'll continue. It says, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing. What do you do when God has chosen you and he has people that he wants you to meet and people that he wants you to encourage and people that he wants you to uh, tell about him and just love on them and share with them. And he's saying he needs you to bear fruit and we're still, you know, locked up in our homes trying to figure out how to make ends meet. It's time to be. I'm not saying run outside and scream uh, from the rooftop, you know, Jesus is Lord. But I'm saying it's still that time. I'm going to still encourage. It's still time to call. If somebody crosses over your mind, it's time to reach out. It's time to make a... a, a a text, but it's time to do something. We just can't be because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us love, power, and a sound mind. So I shut down fear even now in your household in the name of Jesus. We're not fearful. We're fearfully and wonderfully made, but we're not fearful. Amen? So he wants you to bear fruit. So I had given homework for those who did Bible study to just Start reaching out and text someone. So if you did that this week, reach out to someone and just text on them, loved on them, shared with them, I mean, encouraged them, said, I did that. Amen? The scripture continues and it says, and that your fruit will remain and be lasting. One of the funniest things is to have fruit. And when you buy organic fruit, it's not really that lasting. But, you know, I noticed that a little GMO fruit lasts a long time. I had some apples that I purchased a place. And I am telling you, I think those apples were here for about two, three weeks. And I said, do they ever sour? Do they ever rotten? Is there not a bruise? I kept, like, inspecting the apples. I was inspecting them with, the, with those in my household. I said, these apples have stayed green the whole time. And that's the fruit that God is talking about, that when you share and when you love on someone and you tell them about Christ, when you tell them and they plant him in their heart and in their mind, that fruit remains. They change. They're no longer the same. You don't know who you're speaking into life of or encouraging. 
that could be the next person, that could be the next pastor, the next evangelist, the next um, preacher. But we have to speak up. It's time to be more than just working on the sidelines. It's time to not just be a member of church. It's time to be a disciple. And though there are not many disciples, he said greater works we would do. Jesus said greater things we would do. So how can we do those things if it's not time to disciple? I was, you know, I was pondering some things, and I, I want you to ponder them with me. I was thinking about some things for those who don't know ponder. I was thinking about some things. What does church look like now in, in a, a, a social distance baptism? What does church look like now with a social distance baby dedication? I had a new baby that is uh, that's in our ministry, and uh, they did a drive-by social distance visit where pastor gets to look but can't touch, right? Uh, she's six feet away with a mask, and she's looking. What does that look like? God is pressing us because that separation that we have from him we're feeling it now in the natural. I didn't like the way that felt to be separated. That a, a new baby that's in the ministry, I can't touch. This is the same thing that God is saying to us. He says, I can't touch your life. I can't touch your heart. I can't touch your attitude. It's time to be better. It's time to be more. Let Ask God tonight. Touch something of me so I can be all that you call me to be. Let him touch your mouth so you don't curse like you used to or tell people off or quit. Touch my mind so I'm not worried about everything and not anxious and fearful. Touch my heart so I can love again because somebody hurt me and because they hurt me, I'm not loving no one anymore. Touch tonight, God. It's time to be more. It's time to be better. And he wants to do great in you. He wants fruit to remain. And that lasting fruit is always going to be love. Isn't it time to be more loving? Time to be more kind? Time to be sure that Jesus is your choice? Isn't it time to, you know, stop playing church and be the church? Not going to a place, but being in a space, knowing that people know that you are the church? It's time to be. And for those who aren't connected to Christ, it's time to turn your heart over. It's time to accept him as your savior. Not that you're going to be perfect, but it's time to change. Amen? So you can be as sweet. Let me move out the way. As sweet as can be. Because when you have Jesus, it's sweeter than the day before. You don't have to worry no more. And not saying that Christians do not have problems, because we do. Our family members die, people, Christians get divorced, they have bills to pay, they have debt, they have other things as well. But we have a, a assurance and a hope that doesn't take us to a place. I'm praying against even those who are so despondent and, and saddened that there's, you know, thoughts have crossed your mind that, you know, the world would be better without me. And I'm saying no. It's time to be. The world needs you. So I, I even pray even now against the spirit of suicide, against the minds and the hearts of people who will even see this video, that you are, will live and not die. You will be more. You will be better. And God does have a purpose and a plan for your life. It's time to be. But with, with that time to be, Jesus is saying, it's time to be with me. So it's time to be with him. Amen? So you want something that's going to be lasting. And the end of that scripture says, so whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give it to you. So that was in the Amplified. Because it says, whatever you, can you imagine that when you have a lasting relationship with Jesus and you represent him, you can go to him and ask him, and he will give. And he doesn't always give you everything you ask because he knows your heart. So here we are. It's time to be. But the last thing, do you want everlasting life? Do you want that if breath leaves your body that you want to be connected to him? That's 
the be last thing I want. That's the be last thing I'm talking about. Because all the stuff that we worry about, shoes and cars and clothes and, and having a relationship and all of that, but when that all ends, that be last thing that I, I, want, I want to talk to you and encourage you tonight is everlasting life. It's time to be connected to Christ in Jesus' name. Amen? Listen, when you surrender to God and follow his process, he will promote you and lift you up in his timing. So this thing, I, this, this topic is called, you know, this message is called time to be. But Lord, we don't like all this time. We're tired of being in the house. So is anybody tired of about being in the house? I walked around again today. Tired of being in the house. It's time, children thought it was going to be time to go back to school in New York City. But guess what? The school's out. Teachers are tired of being at home. Right? Parents are tired of being at home. Uh, some of the, 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 the nurses, the doctors, they're tired as well of being at work. So sometimes we're, we're on one end looking at like, oh, we're locked in, we're in. But think about those who are in that are locked into jobs that is 12 and 16 hours. So even now in the name of Jesus, we're praying for the doctors and the nurses, the home health aides, the housekeepers, the correction officers, the officers, the FDNY, the EMTs, all those on the front lines, the, the, those at the supermarket, those that are cleaning the trains. Cover them even now in the name of Jesus because even though we're, we're frustrated wanting to be all that we want to be, they're, they're wishing that time would not be, that it would just be over. So we have to continue to pray. Part of our time to be is to spend time not only talking to the Lord about our things, but talk about others. Think about others. Is this time to be only going to be about me? Or is it going to be about thee, which is Christ? So our focus cannot be just me focused in this time to be. It's time to help others. It's time to share. And I know it's been a while, and that's the issue. Sometimes we have to go back to things and go over it again. Because now it's almost like two months we're in. And we may forget some things because now we're in a rut. We get up a certain time, we, we eat breakfast, we prepare ourselves, and we keep moving. But it's time to still be more. What is that be that God is telling you to be? What is the new be that he wants in your life? And not the, and the old be that you have to get rid of. Talk to the Lord tonight after this, um, this um, sermon and say, God, what is the new thing that you want me to be? It's time to be more. It's time to be better. And some of us have think that we have reached the epitome of our careers and all of that. But I, I, I fight you tonight. I beg to differ with you tonight that there's more that God is requiring of you. Even when you think you've, you've made it somewhere, there's a next level he wants to take you to. Amen? Because he wants you to be lasting. Amen? But you're not last. Amen? Say, I'm not last. Because even if you last, the first will be in the last. That's in the word. Amen? I want us to go Hmm. To time. So time in the Greek is kairos, which means a set time, a season or an opportune time for action. So even in this time to be, there's a set time. Because sometimes we want to rush the time. A lot of us would like to finish uh, college in a year, but it's some of it's four and five years. We pray even now, as I'm thinking about college with the class of 2020, because some of them are, are disappointed and discouraged related to the ending. But this is not the ending I'm speaking even now. This is such an amazing beginning. And God is going to propel the class of 20 like never before because of their steadfastness, but because they were standing strong in the midst of adversity. Amen? Is this your season? Is this your opportune time? Is God shifting every area of your life? If you're feeling that way, because he's setting you up for your time to be. Your time to be more. Your time to be a giver. Your time to be a lender and not a borrower. Your time to be ahead 
and not the tail. Your time to be above things and not beneath things. This is your time to be, if you're, if you're wise, you, if you ask him, this is your time to be getting out of debt. This is your time to save. But foremost, it's your time to love. Ask God for more love tonight. To have a heart for others. To have a heart to share and to care. A heart to give and a heart to serve. Because those of us who are saying we're Christians, that's what Jesus Christ did. Even on his, his set time, when it was time for him to die on the cross, he still was saying things like, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Is it time for you to forgive somebody that you've been holding up for a little bit? It's time to be. It's time to be more. It's time to be make a difference in someone else's life. It's time to make a difference in your own life. It's time to get rid of all of the, the, the things that people have said about you, who you could be and who you aren't going to be. It's time to know that God, when God is for you, who can be against you? It's time to know that Christ is king and lord over your life. He's a protector. He's a master. He's a coverer. He's a keeper. He keeps your mind. He keeps your heart. He provides for you. He loves you when you feel unlovable. He loves you even when you're not doing the right thing. He loves you when you're doing the wrong thing. He just loves you with an unfailing love, an agape love. But he's just saying it's time to be with me. Don't you want to be with me? Aren't you tired of doing things your own way? But there's a set time. Is tonight your set time? In all of this virus and all of these changes, is this your season to make Jesus your reason? Is this your set time? So I encourage you tonight. Make Jesus your choice. Make him your choice. God wants you to be ready. God wants you to be more. He wants you. He's calling you. He's drawing you. Because what is your time to be? What is your time to be? What is that you really want to be? Ask yourself that tonight. Sit with yourself. Give yourself 30 minutes. Can you imagine you can give yourself, you can give a movie 30 minutes. You can give a sermon 30 minutes. You can give the washing machine 30 minutes. Give yourself 30 minutes tonight and say, God, what's my time to be? Your time to be could right be right now. Your time could be, be in a couple of months. Your time could be, could be next year. But start your preparation process. There's never going to be a time like this where you get to sit, stop, and figure out who you are. Learn. That that to be is to learn about me. Amen? Learn about you in this season. I encourage you. Let God steer your course. Stop trying to do it your own way. Many of us do that. Lots of us do that. All of us may do that. We want to do it our own way. But spend time with God. That 30 minutes, spend time so he can tell you what the course is that you should take. And what is the way that you should take. Is the position and what you're doing in your life right now, is this what you're going to be doing forever? Or do you need to expand that? Some of you are business owners. Some of y'all are chefs. Some of you all are the new restaurants of the future. Some of you are the new stores for the future. But if you don't sit to find out from God what is the new thing, you're the new teachers. You have the new strategies. You have new strategic plans for businesses and you're the new contractors. You got to know that this is time to be so much more. God has so much more in store for you. So I want to encourage you tonight that he wants you to be more in Jesus' name. Amen? He wants you to be more. God is in control of our increase. 
He's in control of your promotion. Just be diligent with him. And he will raise you up in due season. Amen? But don't rush the process. Let's say hallelujah right there. Take a breath. Do not rush the process. Because sometimes some of the things that God has told us to be and it's time to be seems so enormous that we have to take a breath and we don't see it. But that's why we said, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. We need the Holy Spirit to direct us and to guide us. And those of you who don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, this is your turn. Let's just pray even now. Because God has some promises for you. But if you don't accept him, and how do you do that? You just say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. I don't want to live the life I'm living anymore. I want you to be my Savior, and I want you to be my Lord. And I need your spirit to come in and guide me and help me day in and day out. Because, Lord, I know this is not about perfection. This is about relationship. And I want to relate to you. So, Father, I'll follow you all the days of my life. And that's how simple it is. And then you go from step to step, becoming all that God has called you to be. Because it's time to be as sweet as can be. Because God wants you to have an everlasting life. So Father, I just thank you tonight. I thank you that your word says, and I'm going to end with this scripture, Ephesians 2.10, this Amplified. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. So it's time to be. So we bless the Lord tonight for his word. We bless them that you're getting ready to have that good life. And even in the sadness and even in the pain, there's a good life that is awaiting all of us. It's everlasting life. Amen. To be with the Father and to never feel pain and suffering no more. So tonight, just be as sweet as you can be to hang out with thee. So Father, we just love you tonight and as we prepare ourselves to go into communion to just represent your body and the, your blood, we don't take this lightly. Let us all examine ourselves even now and just ask the Lord to forgive us for anything that we did that we didn't feel was right in his eyes. Amen. And I want to, um, it's time for those who are at home that are doing their in-home communion to get your elements. You can get your bread. I have the communion um, cup because we have those at home and I have the wafer. But you can have bread, you can have cracker. And I want to share with you, I was doing a, a study and I, this communion um, statements really just, um, touch my heart, so I want to share these with you. It says, what is the Holy Communion? The Holy Communion, known as the Lord's Supper, represents the greatest expression of God's love for his people. Two items are used in the Holy Communion. It could be bread, it could be a cracker, it could be a wafer, and it represents Jesus' body that was bruised and battered before and during his crucifixion. And the cup which represents his shed blood. So I have both the cup and I have the wafer, which is his body. When Jesus walked on the earth, he was vibrant and his body was full of life and health. 
He was never sick. But before Jesus went to the cross, he was badly beaten by the Roman soldiers. And his body was torn as he hung on the cross. At the cross, God also took all our sickness and our disease and put them on Jesus. His originally perfect and healthy body so that we can walk in divine health. That is why the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. And that's in Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24. In Luke 22, 20, Jesus tells us that the cup is the new covenant in my blood. And the Apostle Paul tells us that the blood of Jesus brings forgiveness of sins. And that's in Colossians 1.14 and Ephesians 1.7. So why do we take this communion? Why do believers, because not everyone takes communion. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, this is not to be taken lightly. It's for believers who want to remember that he died for them, that his body was beaten and the blood that was shed for them. And we want to remember this because we don't ever want to forget what Jesus did for us because if we forget that, then there's no reason to be even thinking about everlasting life because without that, there would be no life. Amen? It says, besides being born again in Christ, a healthy body and mind are the greatest blessings anyone can have. And the Holy Communion is God's ordained channel of healing and wholeness. On the, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus ate his last supper with his disciples. And knowing what he would accomplish through his sacrifice, he instituted the Holy Communion. His loving instruction is, is that we are to remember him as we partake of the Holy Communion. Jesus wanted us conscious of how his body was broken for our, our wholeness. So even now, take your element and we take the wafer. Amen? We take your bread. I want you to take it even now. Father, we bless the bread or the element, the wafer, cracker, whatever is in the household even now. And we're remembering that Jesus' body was broken so we could be whole. So Father, we eat wholeness even now in the name of Jesus. Sound mind right now. Have your wafer or your element, your bread with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. His body was broken for our wholeness. And his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And whenever we partake in this consciousness, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So today when we took this bread, we're declaring that Jesus' health and divine life flows in our bodies even now. So Father, I thank you that healing and wholeness is in bodies even now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, here is your blood. And we remember the blood that you shed for us. We don't ever want to forget that you died in our place. So each of each person at home, even now, as we do communion, take your, your juice, take your beverage, and let us drink unto the Lord, remembering what he did for us. We don't take it lightly. Drink with me. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, God. And when we partake of that cup, we are declaring that we are forgiven and have been made righteous. Jesus' blood gives us right standing before God, and we can go boldly to our Father in his presence. You can know that in Hebrews 4.16. So when we, uh, when we pray, we can be sure that Jesus hears us. So we thank the Lord for our, his communion. And we just have to remember this is not something that we take lightly. This is not a snack for us as Christians. We're remembering the, the broken body of our Lord. We're remembering the blood that was shed. And we don't ever want to forget 
This is time not to be forgetful. And we remember what Jesus has done for us. So we just want to bless each and every one of you tonight for tuning in with us at Standard Bear, New York. We just bless the Lord for each and every one of you. We thank God that you're, you're striving to be all that you can be. And I'm speaking to someone even now. Um, it's not about money. It's about a decision. Because there's things that God has told you to be and you have money in the way. But as you make the steps towards becoming all that he's saying for you to be, he will create the financial opportunity and move the money off the, out of the way and it will be off the table. So I pray even for who I'm speaking to right now that finances are coming into your household so it's not even a thought. You have to take the steps that are necessary to be all that God has called you to be. No more backtracking. Move forward in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you tonight that you continue to instruct us and encourage us to be all that we are to be in you. And every day with you, God, will be sweeter than the day before. So once again, I am Pastor Sonia Chambers. We are Standard Bear in New York. And we thank you for, you know, finding time to just sitting with us and be encouraged as we continue to move forward and transition into this new way of life. Amen. So God bless each and every one of you. Have sweet sleep and good night.